Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dave Klein, aka Dave Control, and it is finally here. Elden Ring. Let's just jump into it. I'm gonna hit new game. Um, so you guys are aware who are new to me, I like to go de in depth into the lore, I like to talk about item descriptions, and I tend to talk. If you don't like talky let's plays, I'm giving you a heads up right now, I tend to do those. Uh, I'm going to choose Vagabond, because I'm gonna do more of a strength type of build, I think. Um, so we're gonna go through that. And yeah, let's jump right in. So let's go with uh, my boy, you know him, you love him, Kita. It is time for Elden Ring Kita edition. Okay, so as far as the keepsakes go, um, something that I think is worth uh, mentioning is like, none of these are like ones that you're never going to be able to find. It's not like a, in some games like where it's way more difficult to find these. Um, the one that I recommend starting with is Golden Seed. I highly recommend that. Fanged in Pashes. You can't. You don't start with the Spirit Calling Bell to use those, so that's not too important. Stone Sword Key. Um, that that's helpful, but you're gonna find a lot of those, so it's not too big of a deal. Whereas Golden Seed are th those are way more limited, and it's gonna be ultra helpful right away as that reinforces your Sacred Flask and makes it so you have more chugs essentially. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's just use. Uh, one of my guys, even though he doesn't look great himself. I, I really need to make a better template. I don't even know why I used that one. And I'm going to just go ahead and let the cutscene run, and I'm not going to talk during it. is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, Marika's offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden their newfound strength triggered the shattering. A war from which no lord arose. A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. The call of long lost grace speaks to us all. Chieftain of the Badlands, the ever brilliant Gold Mask. Fear, the deathbed companion, the loathsome Dung Eater, and Sir Gideon Ogmir, the all knowing. I love the voice actor for this so much. And one other whom 
grace would again bless a tarnished of no renown. Oh, it me, Kita. Cross the fog to the lands between to stand before the Elden Ring. And become the Elden Lord. All right. We are here. So, the ring gesture. Awesome. <laughs> so, a uh, real question is... Okay, first of all, the people who were mentioned there were tarnished NPCs. Uh, okay. Tarnish Wisenfinger, and uh, though the path be broken uncertain, claim your place as Elden Lord. Let's go ahead and look at some of my item descriptions right away, so we can read about the Vagabond, which is what I chose, and the Tarnish Wisenfinger we just found. Uh, that's just so you can write messages. A finger of corpse wax so emaciated the bones is visible. It is a relic of those who came before, left to help those who would come after. It's not much there. You always have a memory of grace. The memory of first grace which once guided bygone tarnished in the lands between, lose all rooms and return to the last site of grace visited. It is merely a cycle. Stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. A cycle, huh? Something cyclical in a Miyazaki game. Who would have thought? But yeah, the merely a cycle part's interesting, so take note of that. The golden seed I got. A golden seed found at the base of an illusory tree. Uh, when the Elden Ring was shattered, these seeds flew from the Erd Tree, scattering across the various lands as if life itself knew that its... End had come. Uh, okay, long sword doesn't really give us much, and neither does that. It just like talks about the weapons. Um, same with that. But let's see. Okay, so the vagabond knight helm, helm of the knight banished from their motherland, dirty and battered after enduring a lengthy vagabond journey. The visor is broken and can no longer be lowered. Uh, metal, and that's like about it. So the fact that uh, okay, the crest emblazoned on the front of it is worn and dingy, no longer able to evoke sentiment. So, not too much about the Vagabond Knights, other than they were banished from their motherland, so... That's about it. Which is what? I don't know. I don't know. I actually don't know yet. I'm still trying to, like, figure this stuff out. Um, on my main save, so you guys are aware, I'm about 80 hours into the game. Chapel of Anticipation! But, um... So, I'm still, like, trying to figure out the lore. But we're gonna talk about it together. Hopefully, we're gonna have a fun discussion about the lore. And we can talk about it and kind of figure out the lore together as we go through. And I'll try to, like, talk about stuff I know without being too spoilery as well. So I'm going to try to do both. Uh, right here we come across our first big boy enemy. Uh, the typical Souls thing that they like to do from software thing. A grafted Scion, where they like to just give, like, a super difficult enemy right off the bat. Thing is, uh, this guy's really tough. Really, really tough. So I'm going to be curious to see. And you have no way to heal yet. So I'm going to be very curious to see the first person who beats him and what you get for it. Uh, you you can come back to this area later in the game. So I wonder if you're just going to get the same thing you would get if you came back. Oh, nice. I love this attack because I can actually hit him when he does that one. I can, like, run in for an attack. So I'm going to try to play this cautiously to see if I can go ahead and kill him, but it's probably not going to happen, and I'm sorry that this fight's going to be a little slow. So if you are you don't think that sounds fun, I guess you can skip over it. While I'm fighting him, though, something that I can try to talk about is, um, I guess there's a, okay, see, oh, that was not a good idea, but at least it caused him to do this attack. Oh, hey, I got two strikes in there. That was nice. I didn't realize I could get two strikes for that one. Hey, attack I know I can, like, hit him for and punish him for. That's nice. Yeah, look how, like, low my damage is. All right, so the thing I was going to mention... Oh, God. Yeah, see, like, he has so many strikes afterwards. I really need to get him down so I can do him during the tutorial. You do find uh, another Grafted Scion later on. Spoiler. But uh, who's not, like, a boss character. Uh, so, like, that's kind of a good way, I guess, for me to try to get him down. For uh, his moveset better, because... The intro takes so long, it's sort of hard to try to figure him out when you're, like, under such a time limit, and he kills you in three hits. So, two to three hits, actually, depending on the hit that he does. So, okay, things that I've seen... Oh, God, see... Oh, no, 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 I got greedy, because this was taking so long. 
and that's what happens. I was hoping, I was hoping I could get in there during that strike and get him, but I guess not. No, 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 no! Wah! Oh, God. Well, that was three strikes, and I'm still okay. See, I thought maybe there I could run in, but he still got me. And, like, there... My God. I, I'm taking so much time on him. Hey, there we go. Two strikes for sure when he does the jump. I mean, I could just wait forever for him to do those jumps, but that's, like, so slow, you know? So I feel bad about that. Oh, I could have gotten a strike in there, I guess, huh? Once, yeah, and like, okay, so there he does like that. But again, like, then he punishes there and you come in, you don't have time to strike, I don't think. I think he can get you. I can try, I guess, for that one. I can try next time I see him do that and see if, like, after he swings with the right, the left arm, you can. Hey, okay, so this one's the good one. That's the good... Where I can always get one or two strikes on him. It'd be nice if every move set I knew the end, and that way I could like really start to punish him. It's like okay, there's that one. Nope. Uh, okay. Something I want you guys to think about though, while we're fighting him, is why are you supposed to become the Elden Lord, and who wants you to do that, right? Because somebody, especially in Souls games, ah, that's that. Don't worry, Torrent. Fortune is on his side. We found him here, after all. One of his kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. even if it does violate the Golden Order. Hmm. Violating the Golden Order, huh? I think that's the end of the cutscene. I think she's... Yeah, okay, now we're going to get up, I'm pretty sure. So, like I was saying before, I want you guys to think about um, who wants you to become the Elden Lord, and why, and who is bringing in these Tarnish back, and back to life to do this? Uh, yeah, so, those are the thoughts to start thinking about here, because with, you know, these games, people always lie to you. So here we get our healing items. Down there is the Cave of Knowledge, uh, which is basically your tutorial, tutorial, tutorial area, uh, that I'm going to skip for now, and actually... I just realized that I don't know if I've ever gotten that. Huh. Alright. I guess I'll have to think about it later. We're gonna run forward. Um, I'm gonna do the tutorial area another time. Just so I can do it like really quick uh, later on. Uh, because I'd like to just get into the game. Because there is a lot to do. This game is so massive. A lot to do, a lot to talk about. A lot of fun to be had, you know? Uh, don't need to rest at that one. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna rest at it just so I can switch the order of my flasks. So, let's switch it to there. Yeah, that's good. Oh, wait. Actually, another thing I can do, because I got that seed, right? The reason I got that seed is now I can add a charge to the flask. Use one golden seed to increase your number of flask uses. So, now instead of four, you can see that I have five down there. So, that's where that's important. 
All right, the finger sever, uh, tarnished furled finger. I promise there really isn't interesting lore on it, but we'll go ahead and look at them while we're going up. A finger of quartz wax, furled like a hook. It is a relic of those who came before, left to help those who would come after. So there's for co-op. Uh, the phantom blade severs the link formed by a furled finger, but the maidens scorn those who abuse it. So, yeah. Oh, to the right was, by the way, the area I passed. That's where you could use your stone sword keys. And here we are in Limgrave. Looking nice and pretty. I really wish I could turn off the compass, though. I don't know how to do that, other than just turning off the HUD completely. Uh, I I really wish the auto HUD thing, I could make it so there was no compass. Nothing wrong with the compass, it's just sometimes I really just want to look at everything, like admire the scenery, or have footage with no compass. Oh, yes. Tarnished, are we? Come to the lands between for the Elden Ring? Hmm? Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Without guidance, without the strength of runes, and without an invitation to the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. Thanks, Vare. Thanks. Luckily for you, however, there is one shining ray of hope for even the maidenless. Me. Vare. Take care to listen. Are you familiar with grace? The golden light that gives life to you tarnished. You may also behold its golden rays, pointing in a particular direction at times. That is the guidance of grace, a path that a tarnished must travel. Hmm, indeed. Grace's guidance holds the answers. It will lead you tarnished to the path you are meant to follow even if it leads you to your grave. Grace's guidance will reveal the path forward, most certainly, to Castle Stormvale, over on the cliff, the home of the decrepit demigod, Godric the Drafted. It's time you set off, I should think, to Castle Stormvale, on the cliff, if you seek the Elden Ring, maidenless as you are, it's time to cast. Okay, so if you tag Vare, he attacks you with roses, like a bouquet of roses, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Uh, over there, you can see that's a tree sentinel. Uh, so, I uh, better to I've I've beat him both with uh. On foot and on horse, but you're definitely meant to fight him horseback. Although you can do it without a horse, but that's definitely really what you're meant to do. Uh, now there are all these animals roaming about. Uh, point in killing them isn't really for runes. As you can see, I got barely any, but rather crafting materials there. As crafting is new to Elden Ring compared to previous Souls games. First area we're going to go is following the site of Grace and where it's leading us, which is to this Church of Ella right here. I didn't do the tutorial, so I don't have any runes, unfortunately. But um, there's some stuff we're going to want to buy from Kali right off the bat, which actually I'm going to go get some runes just to do that and then come right back. Oh, yeah, so you can fast travel right away anywhere you've gone. And there's going to be... See that marker up there? That's how you get a map fragment. So you can go ahead and... Uh, and that's how you fill out your map is those markers and map fragments. Yeah, let me just run real quick over here, get some runes. Uh, you know what? Actually, I don't need it for the dungeon, first dungeon. I, I take it back. I don't care. We're going to go to the first dungeon, and then we'll come back to Kale after that uh, and talk to him a bunch and see what he has to say. Oh, so something before I go to the first dungeon is you'll find these statues occasionally, and these statues actually will guide you to dungeons. And that's what this guy is going to do right here. Guide and gatekeeper for those returning to the roots, and you can see the direction it's pointing is going to lead you right to a dungeon. Sometimes it really helps and goes to ones that are much more difficult to find. And again, I will go to Kale and get his dialogue and all that, so... 
uh, after I finish this dungeon. So I, mean, I really do want to talk lore and talk about everything in this game. So I'm going to try to do the most complete playthrough that I can for you guys. Um, but, you know, I, I want to buy some stuff from him, so this just kind of makes sense to me to go this way first. I did a beginner's guide for GameSpot where I recommended going to the Waypoint Runes first, which is further up to the right, but that's really for, like, super beginners. Um, I think that this is a good starting dungeon for people who are veterans of the Souls games. The only thing is that I can't level up yet. The, so the whole thing about me being maiden unless that Vari was talking about is you can't level up until you find a maiden. And the way that you activate... Um, here we go. Stormfoot Catacombs. All right. But the way that you activate your maiden, which is Melina, is you have to rest at three sites of grace or activate three sites of grace specifically in the overworld section. So this one doesn't count since it's in a dungeon. A proper death means returning to the Erd Tree. Have patience until the time comes and the roots call to you. So what that guy has around his neck, by the way, and this is a ghost, uh, clearly, and he doesn't talk. None of the ghosts have dialogue, like, outward VO. Um, but that thing around his neck indicates, like, a faithful to the Erd Tree, which is a faction here. There are factions in this game that do not like the Erd Tree, that are very anti-Erd Tree, uh, and everything that it me means and represents. So it, it becomes interesting that there even are those types of factions, because at first the beginning of the game comes across like, hey, the Eld the Erd Tree is all that's holy in this game, and how life itself came, and follow the, the Erd Tree, and then you start to be like, oh, maybe there's some other stuff going on that I'm not aware of, and maybe there's some background to the Erd Tree, and is it really even good, or who the people who follow it are good, or what does it mean? All right, so we find a Grave Glove Wort here. The Grave Glove Wort, I'm going to point out as um, this is how you upgrade your Spirit Ashes, which you can find throughout the game. And a lot of Grave Glove Worts are in these catacombs just by collecting them like that. Uh, what we get here is the Summoning Pool and a small Golden Effigy, which allows you to use these essentially for summoning people in these pools. Uh, you can activate it one just by pressing it and examining it, and that'll activate the Summoning Pool. Right now I'm playing offline, so I can't use it right now, so don't even worry about it. Uh, oh, one of these guys dropped down. Actually, I don't really actually need to kill him, but no, I'm here, so I will. And, you know, I'll do this. This is going to be more fun, actually. So we're going to lead him over here, and if he attacks me first, he attacks me first. But if not, I'm going to let the fire kill him, because that's more fun. So I'm sure he's going to follow me eventually into this, and this fire trap will take him out for me. Prattling Pate, hello. Yeah, so you just took him out for me. Uh, okay, so there's really no lore in these things, but I'm just going to show you it. This is essentially your, like, online play stuff where you can make voices, so. Hello! You know, they ha they've had this since Dark Souls. Um, Twisted clay sculpt in the shape of a human head emits a voice that says hello. Wistful fetish that imparts voices and words on an internal journey. Knock this thing down, it'll lower. You can actually jump on it, um, and hit it again, and it'll take you up, but there's nothing up there. So, in this particular one, dungeon. Uh, okay, so next one's gonna be this, and we're gonna really use the fire here for a lot of fun, so you'll see that in just a moment. And as it's a typical Souls game, in a lot of ways, you're definitely gonna wanna look out for traps. In particular, the trap I'm talking about is these guys right here. They are all ready to ambush me. The first one, though, won't ambush me as long as I attack this guy. And then if I knock this guy down, he, the other ones don't ambush me yet. If I attack this guy or pick that up, that's when they start to try to ambush me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually try to uh, use the fire to help me kill them. So I'm going to go ahead and go here, and I'm going to let the fire take them out for me. So that'll be fun. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's so awesome. So, there we go. That's just a nice way to deal with that. I guess one of them didn't fall down. I noticed that only two of them died there. But yeah, that's definitely like your nice, easy way to take that out. Smoldering Butterfly. Use use the traps to your advantage, you know? Another Ghost Glove Word. Was that different than the Great Glove Word? Yeah. Okay. Strengthen Renowned Ashes. So there's Renowned Ashes that are more powerful and Normal Ashes. Uh, so that's what that is. I didn't see the other item I got, I'm sorry. Some of this beginning stuff I, I don't think is super important to look at, but I'll still do my best. And a lot of the craft, some of the craftable stuff's interesting. I really have to go through it all. 
but most of it's kind of basic in what it tells you and kind of obvious. It's like, you know, it's like a sword description that's like, it is a steel sword made out of steel. It's like, all right, that's, yes, I get it. That's not the most interesting thing, but okay, you know? All right, and there's gonna be an ambush here to the right that I'm gonna try to take on, he oh, there we go. Yeah, it's like, eh, might as well take him on head on right away, right? I rolled right into that, nice job, me. And not too bad, I still have three Estus Chugs left. You wanna go through here because you're gonna find some Spirit Ashes. All right, Wandering Noble Ashes. So let's take a look at those and see what that has to say. Ash and remains in which spirits yet dwell, used to summon the spirits of five wandering nobles. The spirits of nobles who after death now wander the lands between, surely they were in search of something once, but whatever it was has long been forgotten. So, yeah, some descriptions are like that, but there is a lot that fills out the lore, and to me that also makes exploration in this game more fun, because even if I get an item that I'm not planning on using, it might have some interesting lore tied to it, so you're still getting something out of it, uh, out of your exploration, and all the dungeons have things in them that are useful in some way or for some build that someone's going to be excited about, even if it might not be specifically for your build. So I think that's pretty sick, and oh my god, I didn't realize there were two. I thought there was just one. Go! You know, I wasn't gonna heal before the boss, but now I'm wondering if I want to, actually. Eh, whatever. And go to the Site of Grace. I also don't have to kill this guy, I just, I'm just choosing to. You know what, whatever. Let's just try him with one Crimson Tear. So that thing that I activated there, Opened up this, the boss chamber. Uh, that's pretty standard in these dungeons for Elden Ring. Also, uh, I love how in this game you're drinking your own tears. That's basically what you're doing. It cracks me up every time I think about it. So here we find an Earth Tree Burial Watchdog. Uh, there are... Crap. Oh my god. What a great start, eh? I already have to use one. That's so lame. I can't believe I timed that out wrong. Alright, and... I have to wait for him to twitch. There we go. Got the twitch off. Yeah. Oh. For some reason, I didn't realize he was doing that at first. I don't know why. Anyways. I don't know why I didn't realize, I mean. Alright. You're done there. You're done. I'm gonna play it a little safer now that I don't have any Crimson Tears left. Oh, great. Of course I miss one, of course. As soon as he twitches like that, you wanna roll. He he strikes really fast when he's in that like mode. Oh. Alright, what you doing now? Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Yep. Oh crap, I knew I was early right when that happened. Yeah, I knew I was early. Oh god, oh god. <laughs> oh, I'm I got this like way too close right now. Oh, no hits! Aw, oh, lame. Lame. Alright, two hits. This is the easy pattern when he does this thing. Oh, great. No! Woo! I thought he was going to get me there. Come on, bro! Oh, oh, oh. I just accidentally crouched. Sometimes I honestly, I accidentally click in the button and it drives me crazy that I do that to me. I mean, it's totally my fault, but like, I don't know why. I, I don't know if it's the PS5 controller or what, but I seem to only, I've never done that in other games. But then there wasn't really a crouch, right? So, I don't know, man. I don't know. Oh God, oh God, one more hit. There we go. Hey, hey, all right. Feel good, man. Noble Sorcerer Ashes from him. Main reason you really want to kill him is to start getting some uh, some stuff for levels here, but... Spirit of a nobleman who once asked to be given a place at Raya Lucaria. I don't know if it's Raya Lucaria or Raya Lucaria yet, but I'm going to pronounce this Raya. I, I honestly kind of forgot. To learn Glintstone Sorceries. Uh, so, Sorceries, the Sorcery Academy, the main one in the game is Raya Lucaria. But there are, more, there are multiple places that use Sorceries, so it's not the only one. His talents were insufficient to be worthy of donning the stone crown, however, and he is only capable of using the most rudimentary sorcery. 
Did not belong in Riley Caria, huh? All right, and this time I'm gonna rest at my first sight of grace because I haven't rested that one yet, I think. You know what, actually I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and warp to the Church of Ella so we can talk to Kale. And go ahead and give it a rest. Actually, I don't think you have to rest. When you warp, you automatically kind of rest in a way. All right, we're gonna find a smithing stone here. And also a smithing table. Smithing table only lets you upgrade to plus three. You have to find another thing to upgrade further than that. Uh, it uses smithing stones, which uh, let's go ahead and look at that. Smithing stone is found throughout the lands between and mining galleries. Built to excavate, it can be found everywhere. And yeah, so if you find a tunnel, basically, you'll find where they're at. You're a tarnished. I can see it. But I can also see that you're not after my throat. Then why not purchase a little something? I am Kale, purveyor of fine goods. Hey, tell me about yourself, Kale. I am of a nomadic people, selling wares as I travel. The land has been tainted by madness since the shattering of the Elden Ring. It's only tarnished like yourself, who keep things from drying up entirely. Let's say you're a very welcome customer. Oh, well, glad to hear it. At least someone doesn't mind me. You know, if you can spare the rooms, you should buy yourself a crafting kit. A crafting kit allows you to make basic items on your own. Essential, really, if you intend to survive out here for any duration. The kit costs a bundle, and I admit I do take my cut. But the important thing is that you survive. Every custom accounts, after all. I honestly don't use the crafting kit that much, but it's still worth it, and it's cheap. 300 runes is very cheap. Uh, leather bag containing a pestle and mortar, small blade, and various other tools. Provides both means to fight and means to survive. So yeah, you can craft as soon as you buy this, so it's something you want to get. I'm going to need a telescope, because it's good for lore stuff. Uh, <laughs> astrology tool used by members of the Carrion Royal Family. A stolen part of a large in instrument. Carrion uh, is very much related to Raya Lucaria, but we'll talk about that later. Raya Lucaria, Carrion. Eh. During the age of the earth tree, Carrion astrology withered on the vine. The fate once writ in the night skies had been fettered by the Golden Order. So let's go ahead and grab that. And we're also going to grab a torch. So because a torch is definitely something that we're going to want for a lot of dungeons. Uh, I spent more money than I wanted to, but that's okay. I don't think any of this stuff has interesting lore implications. Uh, these notes give you, you can buy them and look into them and you can only see what they say if you buy it. I happen to know these things. I don't know what Waypoint Rune says actually. But uh, I don't think I really care. The Flask of Wonders Physic just kind of gives you a hint on where to find that. Uh, so I don't need it here. Uh, crack Pot is for crafting potted things. Uh, Fro Calling Finger Remedy. Reveals co-op and competitive multiplayer signs. Uh, I don't know if you need that for the summoning pools though. I'm honestly not sure. Uh, throw Throwing Dagger because I never play online like I said. Okay. Uh, actually, let's see if he has anything else to say. No. Goodbye. Okay. So, yeah. All right, let's head to our third site of grace and through the forest. We're going to go to the way... Actually, not the waypoint rooms. Huh. Uh, the waypoint rooms are further south, actually. East and south. So, I don't remember the name of these rooms, actually. I guess we'll find out in a moment. You can notice it's starting to get dark out. The day-night cycle actually does matter in this game for multiple things. It's easier to sneak during night, um, for sure. There's also special bosses and characters who only show up during night. I'm not sure if the same is true of daytime, to be honest. I only know the, that for night, for sure, there are ones that only appear during night. Um, you can rub up against an enemy's back while you're in stealth and they won't notice you there. Whoa, Lord Sworn Strikes... Lord Sworn Straight Sword, nice. Uh... Check that out. That's awesome. Though blackened and damaged by years of use, it appears to have otherwise been kept in serviceable condition, despite the soldier having long since lost their minds. Well-crafted straight sword with an illustrious design wielded by regulars of a lord's army. Uh, okay, so that's the stake of America right there. Basically what that does is if I die in an area around it, like within the area of it, it's going to make it so... Um, you can just, it's basically like a checkpoint. So you can automatically restart there. 
And I think there's a couple reasons they have that. Uh, one, Gate Front Runes. That's what this area is called. This area is, this game is so huge that imagine if you're like roaming around and you rest at a side of grace like 15, 20 minutes away and how annoying that would be if you had to like traverse back to where you were. So I think part of it's that. Part of it is also, um, we're gonna wait for him to pass because this, I actually do wanna be a little stealthy here because this is a pretty big encampment and I'm not at a level where I can just roll through it and like murder everything easily. Uh, that's my the map fragments, my map fragments that I'm gonna get right there. Uh, let's see if I can stealth kill this guy. Yeah, right before he turned around. I knew he was gonna turn around soon, but I wasn't sure when. Oh, this bro, this guy heard me. Oh well, that's okay. As long as it wasn't the big boy who heard me, because that guy's a little crap, a little rough to to kill. This guy's not so bad in the beginning, at least. This guy's rough to kill over there. So I'm actually going to work my way around him a little bit uh, and kill him. Because once all the other enemies start fighting, it gets pretty difficult here. You can get overwhelmed pretty easily in this beginning starting area, in my opinion. So that's why we're going to work our way around. And yeah, once this guy gets far enough away from him so he doesn't hear me kill him, I'm going to go ahead and stealth kill. Actually, no, I'll stealth kill this guy first because these guys with the shields are a little more annoying. And I don't care if the other guy hears me or not. I'm probably just going to go run up and kill him, actually. Some of the guys have trumpets. Uh, none of these guys do. But you want to watch out for the, the trumpet blaring guys. Because that will alert everybody to your presence. And, uh, yeah. It's just going to make it a lot more difficult, for sure. Okay. Hey, Godric's Soldier's Helm. Damn, we're doing some pretty good drops here. Hey. Already doing some pretty good droppage. Uh, okay, so, next thing I'm going to want to do is attack him and try to get a stealth hit in. Now, I'll get my map fragment first. Although, you know what, there's so many guys there, maybe I'll work my way around first. Ah, but then he might hear me. So, I'm trying, hmm, trying to decide here, because I don't want that guy to see me. But I think it's going to happen. Eh, whatever. I, I don't want to take too long either with stuff, so... Oh, he already heard me. All right, that that is what it is. We're gonna like lead him out somewhere where it's just gonna be me and him at the very least. I want to make sure of that. So one thing you can do early on with this guy is you can use your um, your shield bash essentially to try to counter him and get a nice heavy hit on him. But oh god, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I don't think it's I don't use it very often the new shield counter. Like, I, I know it can be useful, but I just haven't found much for it. I've been trying... Actually, like, this backstab mesh is working pretty good for me right now. It doesn't always, so that's good. Uh, we're going to look at the Godric Soldier Helmet, actually. Let's take a look at that, because that's, that's pretty cool that I got that drop. And we can talk about Godric a bit. Godric, uh... Okay, Helm worn by soldiers loyal to Godric the Grafted. That's all it says. Okay. Uh, but I do want to point out that he's called Godric the Grafted and not Godric the Golden. Uh, so that's that's worth talking about a little bit. I don't want to ruin too much about Godric right now because we're going to talk about him a lot as we get to him and get closer and into Stormvale. Um, but I, I feel like I know a decent amount about Godric at this point that I can talk. But like I said, I don't want to spoil things. So now I'm trying to find that balance. And hopefully I can... All right, all right. Hey, that worked out pretty damn well, except for the pup. No! Dogs make everything harder in this game. I mean, wolves, whatever. Wolves, dogs. I was hoping that he wouldn't hear, mainly because I knew that there were a bunch of dogs at this encampment. All right, that, that turned out fine. Turned out just fine. I'll take it. There is one more pup, uh, as you can see right there. If I take that guy, the pup out, the other guy will be just fine. But I don't want to get ganked by them. Okay, hey, why, why'd you come around that way? What are you doing over there? What, what are you doing over there? Sorry, I'm not showing off the new mechanic of the shield bash. Like I said, I just don't use it very much. It's, that's not my thing. And I honestly, I don't do the jump attack that much either. I just don't. 
Um, I, I haven't found that they help that much, to be honest. Although they're there, so, you know, I'll, I'll use that stuff. Okay, so we definitely wanted to take a lot of look at this encampment because there's a lot of good things that here. So, the first thing was the map fragment, obviously, which if I open my map up now, you can see that I have a nice little tiny chunk of the map. And there's so much in this game, it's insane. This is just a really tiny chunk. Uh, but here we get an Ash of War and a Whetstone Knife. So Whetstone Knives are what's going to allow you to equip Ashes of War and also add very specific attributes to your Ashes of War. But this basic one at least is going to... And that the attributes can be helpful because it changes the scaling of your weapons. Uh, the one that I like using for strength builds you find in Stormville Castle because it gives you a heavy style. But um, that's specifically for strength builds. But there are multiple types of whetstone knives and they give you different types of attributes. Uh, and like I said, they allow the use of Ash of War. Most Ashes of Wars don't have interesting descriptions. They kind of just, like this one, just tell you what it does. So I'm not going to really read all of them. I might glance through just to see if it has a description, but that one just kind of described it briefly. Um, oh, I do want to equip a torch, actually, because I bought it for a reason. Because there are going to be some dungeons that are, like, pitch black without it, so... Uh, really, you want tor a torch in this game. It's pretty important. And before I rest at that site of grace, we're going to get the weapon that I'm probably going to be maining for a little bit here. Uh, before I find another weapon to main, which is the Lord's Sworn Greatsword. Uh, so this is going to be a good starting strength build weapon. You can see I don't meet the strength requirements yet. You need 16 strength. I have 14, but luckily I'm about to be able to level up and get those requirements. Because this is my third site of grace. So I'm going to shut up and let Melina do the talking. Greetings, traveler from beyond the fog. I am Melina. I offer you an accord. Have you heard of the Finger Maidens? They serve the Two Fingers, offering guidance and aid to the Tarnished. But you, I am afraid, are maidenless. I can play the role of Maiden, turning runes into strength to aid you in your search for the Elden Ring. You need only take me with you to the foot of the Erd Tree. I so badly want to see what happens when you refuse uh, and playthroughs without that, but we're going to accept. When it's settled, summon me by grace to turn runes into strength. Ah. Another matter. I bequeath to you this ring. Oh yeah, I'm sure like the level 1 bros. Yeah, when the level 1 playthroughs start coming through, I want to see it without Melina. That's going to be awesome. Use it to traverse great distances. It will summon a spectral steed named Torrent. Torrent has chosen you. Treat him with respect. Also, I don't know if you get torrents now that I think about it. If you don't do this, I wonder. Shall I, I do wonder. To strength. Let I've never said no to her, but I should. For but I should for a playthrough. Share them with me. Your thoughts. Your ambitions. The principles you would follow. 
Okay, so endurance raises your max equip load, which I'm gonna want. Also, I want more stamina, anyways, um, because this weapon's a little heavier. Uh, so I'm raising strength. 16 is a requirement, but I'm gonna start raising up my strength to start making this a bit of a strengthy build, I think. And yeah, I give myself endurance. And also, uh, that stuff was also raising my physical defense, which was nice. Strength does that a lot, which is really good. Uh, all right, next thing we are going to do, actually, because it's nighttime, now if we now that we have torrent, we can go ahead. Actually, you know what? Before I warp back, uh, here, let me unequip this, and I'm going to equip that. Oh, you know what I've also meant to equip? Uh, I'm going to equip my Binox, and I'm going to do torrent. Okay. So one of the awesome new things in Elden Ring is horseback riding, which I think is a lot of fun. I think they did a good job with the feel of it, personally. Uh, I'm a big Elden Dark Souls, Souls fanboy, but also I, I really do think they did a good job. Oh yeah, and I'm going to switch to my Lord Sworn. It's a great sword. You see it's got like a little bit more attack power. It's not a lot, but what it's really going to do is allow me to stagger enemies, so that's going to be nice. Uh, other thing now that I have activated, or now that you've gotten Torrent, if you travel back to the Church of Ella, a new character is going to appear, an NPC. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that. May I have a word? It's the girl from the trailer everybody was wondering about. Let's take a nice look at her face. Wow! And she's also got one of those symbols, but it's on a different eye, right? Um, and... Her face is cracked, so it's interesting. Interesting. Actually, that makes me think something I want to check later in the game. Anyways. A pleasure to meet thee, Tarnished. I am the witch, Rena. I'd heard tell of a Tarnished hurtling about atop a spectral steed. And upon looking into the matter, the talk, I surmise, is of thee. Thou art possessed of the power, no? To call forth a spectral steed named Torrent. It is I. I can do that. Ah, as I had hoped, I was entrusted this for thee by Torrent's former master. Ooh, okay, so the spirit calling bell, this is how you can now summon spirits. So this is what you, you want to do to be able to do that if you want to summon spirit ashes. The bell of calling forth spirits. Summon them with it. From ash and return to the earth tree, the spirits will obey thine command but briefly. As they recall battles past, now it is thine to do with as thou wishest. Yeah, so she only appears at night, by the way, and only after you've gotten Torrent, which is why I came right back here to show you that. Give mine intrusion tarnished. I doubt we shall again meet. But all the same, learn well the lands between. How long will it be, I wonder? before the tarnished tire of obeisance to the two fingers. Interesting, eh? Interesting. Why would we tire of being obedient and listening to the two fingers, which Melano is just talking about, who seem to be the ones that we're listening to right now, and the finger maidens are serving to level us up. And the two fingers seem to be related to us coming back, don't they? So why would we grow tired of being obedient, like, listening to them? Hmm. Wait. Weren't you... Well, you're back. Care to buy something? I honestly don't know why he says that, like the warranty thing. There are others of my people who yet survive in these lands. If the mood takes you and you meet one, then offer them some trade, won't you? My people, wanderers all have long been spurned by the grace of gold, which is why we cannot settle, but instead are forced into this pitiful, unceasing journey. But thanks to that, things are not so different for us now. Though the Elden Ring is shattered, I think this makes us kindred spirits of sorts. Your people, the Tarnished, and mine. Perhaps you don't need to hear this, but see that no harm comes to my kin. We have a saying, we wanderers. Lament not your solitude. Expect no sympathy. No regard. Nothing. But if anyone dares harm us, show them no mercy. That is our code, so to speak. Just the way we are. Deeply unforgiving. Yeah, now this makes me want to see what happens if you go on like a murder spree. 
But this guy does give you like a gesture that you'll want later on. So like keep on coming back to him. He has new things, as you can see that he'll say. Anyways, now that we have that, uh, and I'm sorry that this episode there hasn't been too much like action in it because it's been a lot more of like the beginning NPC dialogue and stuff like that. Uh, so we're gonna go into another dungeon now. And, like, there's so many dungeons in this game. They're so big that I promise the next ones are going to be more action-packed if you guys want this. But I hope you're still enjoying the fact that we're doing a little more of, like, a... Let's talk to people. Let's, like, actually, like, think about the lore and what things mean sort of playthrough. Um, so I hope you guys are enjoying that. Um, yeah. Okay, so I think it's actually... I, the cave's around here somewhere. But, yeah, you know, while we're on the way, we'll take out some of these guys. There it is. Yeah, not all these caves are super obvious when you look at the map. Some of them are. Like, look, that's obviously going to be a cave, right? That was obvious. Also, that's a really important one. Uh, but, like, a lot of these places you're going to want to check out. If you see something that looks like a rune, you see something that looks like a, ca a cave, it's very well worth exploring. Sorry, I just had, like, dinner right before I right before I start recording, so I apologize. Groveside Cave is going to give me the perfect chance to show why you want a torch. So, while I can see things... Um, actually, you know what? It's not. I take it back. It's a different dungeon where, it, like, it makes it very clear why you want a torch. This one, sort of, but, yeah, it's a different dungeon I was thinking of. Uh, we'll take care of those wolves later. First thing we're gonna do, though, is, um... We're gonna go ahead and go through here. Find the Beastman of Farum Azula. He's a lot more difficult as a starting boss if you don't have what I have. Also, I just realized I'm fat rolling, and that's no good. So, I'm going to have to take care of that in a moment. But, yeah, like, if you know, you know, the fact that I'm, like, stuttering, staggering him right now makes him so much easier. And that's basically just thanks to my, my weapon that I just bought. So, you can see that's the nice thing about these heavier weapons is that there are some guys that you can stagger. Like, it basically completely trivializes this fight. Flame Drake Talisman. Okay, I'm going to unequip my helmet and see if that gives me medium roll. Yeah. Uh, just for now. And I can equip this. Boost fire damage negation. The ancient dragons. So dragons are a thing here. Uh, who ruled in the prehistoric era before the Erd Tree. Kind of gives you Dark Souls 1 vibes, right? Ancient dragons before uh, Gwyn and all them. Would protect their lord as a wall of living rock. And so it is that the shape of the dragons has become symbolic of all manner of protections. All right, uh, let's go back to the beginning. That, oh shit, oh man, I meant to go backwards the other way. I'm gonna have to go back again so I can finish out the cave. Sorry guys, sorry about that. But hey, gives me a chance to maybe level up again real quick. No, no, I'm gonna do this like I hadn't done that. I'm gonna do this, I'm not gonna give myself the break. That was bad of me. At least now I can fast roll. That would have been annoying if I'd been fighting the these wolves and not realized I wasn't fast rolling. Uh, okay. Where is the other wolf? I'm trying to look for the daddy wolf. Like, that guy... Oh, he was, like, right where I was. What? Right. <laughs> yeah, these wolves are actually more trouble than the boss. <laughs> okay. Well, just because of what I've got... Where did he drop down from, anyways? Alright. Like, somewhere... I thought it was where it was. Maybe, did I just miss him? Am I dumb? Alright. Glowstone. Nice. And let's just pick up all the materials. Even though I rarely craft stuff, they, it can come in handy. So it's just, like, might as well. And... Oh, one last one, I think. And then I'll show you the difference with the torch. Yeah, like, it really makes a huge difference in this game. A cracked pot. Awesome. I'm glad I went back for it. And you know what? At least I got some runes for if I wasn't at the point where I could level up. I just realized since it's nighttime, I could go fight the Knight's uh, Cavalry real quick. I could try to go for that and see if it works out. It's a little tough uh, to me. But, you know, whatever. Alright, let's equip that. And you know what? Screw it. It's nighttime. Let's let's try to do some knights, knights rider, knights cavalry. There's also an NPC we're gonna want to meet around here, um, but I'm not going to do that yet. It's gonna be the left there. I'll do that the next let's play because I want a little more action in this one. 
So let's end it well with a nice boss fight here. That hopefully goes well, but you know, it might not because this guy can be pretty tough. Also, these things here, the silver ones drop uh, either Ashes of War or Somber Smithing Stones typically, which are both things that you're really going to want. I'm killing these guys, by the way, so they don't come in the middle of my fight with the Knight's Cavalry guy right there. Uh, yeah, which, honestly, I, I have some trouble with him sometimes, so I don't honestly know how this is going to go. I might lose. So I'm just I'm just giving you guys the heads up that this actually might not go well. Uh, I would say that he's not a beginning level fight like where I'm at, but why not do it? Also, um, the reason he's not getting hurt is because right now I'm just hitting his steed. He acts a lot like your character in the sense of, like, you can kill the steed, but he'll call it again, just like your spectral steed. It acts very similar in that way. Um, but, like, it staggers him a lot when you do drop and kill the steed, or at least, like, take out the steed briefly. So, again, it's, it's really similar to how you act. Oh, crap, I missed that. Also, holding... Ooh. Holding R2 does a good deal more damage, but you usually don't... You're not as likely to hit him, which is why I don't do it all the time. Because you're much more likely to just hit the horse, I feel like, when I do that. Or that's just been my experience. So if you notice that I'm doing more R1 swings, that's why. Although you can clearly see the R2 does do a nice little extra bit of damage and crap. Get out of my fight, man. Get out of my fight. You don't belong here. That's not cool. That's what I was trying to avoid. Clearly, I didn't expect that he would show up on that side of the bridge. Because I'm used to the other side bothering me. I'm not used to that side coming into the fight. But yeah, this guy can take you out pretty fast, by the way. So even though I'm doing good right now, that, that doesn't mean I'm really doing good yet. Because he really can take you out with, like, one false move. Uh, like a lot of Souls bosses. I tend to do that a lot by accident where I jump off the horse. Where is he going? I've actually seen him fall off before in the network test. Oh, see, like, right there? Of course, that was because I was trying to take out that knight, so I blame it on that. Wow, the knight really screwed me over there. All, like, all, I've been doing bad since I tried to take out that guy who was in the way. Up until then, I was doing just fine against this guy. Alright. Damn it. I really want to hit the knight. I mean, the horse is fine, but, like, really, I'm trying to get the knight, too. You can hold R2 for a while, by the way, whilst dragging there. I actually can choose when to let it go, which is another plus side of doing the R2 attack. But, yeah, it really is, like, for these horseback guys, the fact that it's a sweeping attack that makes it not always as good of a choice. And as soon as he gets up, you want to get away. Because he actually has some good strikes here. I'd rather fight him horseback. And also, when he summons his guy again, he he gets right... He knocks you out, basically. So, yeah. I didn't see how badly that hurt Torrent. And that's important, because it he knocks out Torrent, I'm basically going to die. Because you get staggered really badly when Torrent uh, briefly dies. I didn't say this before, but you can also summon Torrent again. Uh, by using an Estus Flask if Torrent dies. So it's not like, um... It's not like you're just totally screwed if that happens. So I do want to point that out, by the way. Come on, get him. Alright. Alright, I'm going to use one heal for Torrent. <laughs> just in case, because I think I can spare it. Oh, missed him there. Oh, crap! Oh, crap! Okay. Wait, actually, Torrent's doing fine. I thought Torrent might be, like, close to dying when I he hit me there. <gasps> Okay, now, now I gotta worry about Torn and me. Uh, imagine if I'd, like, died right there. That would've been awful. <laughs> uh, these guys are right here, but they might disappear because they're so close to the bridge, so I don't think it's worth taking them on right now. You know what? Uh, screw it. Let's do it real quick. Let's see what happens. Although, I have a feeling it's like they're gonna disappear. And now look at that repeating uh, thrust that I just got right afterwards. And then we'll do some level ups and call it uh, call it good for this first one. So, yeah, I think it's been a pretty good first episode. No deaths yet. That's definitely going to change. Um, 
This, I honestly think that this game is really tough. Um, while there's a lot of ways to negate that challenge, it is honestly a very tough game. Um, so just because I'm doing good right now, I don't want you to take away that the game's not. I've, I've played this intro section many times at this point. So it's, it's partially that. Uh, also, I guess like I'm playing this, like I'm releasing this the day the game came out. So that's why I'm saying all this stuff. For people who are watching this afterwards, I guess you don't have to think about that. Okay, let's get this before the carriage disappears on me, in case it does. Alright, great axe, nice. And, um... Tap this guy, who's all sad, he's sad because I killed his friend. I know, I'm a, I'm a monster. I actually think he does that anyways, even if, like, uh... I think he does that, like, right when you start attacking his friend, as opposed to once you killed him. I know I was getting a little greedy there. These guys are pretty difficult when, when they have a sword, by the way. The fact that he's chained up is the reason why he's a little trivialized. But when he's not chained up and when he has a sword, these guys can be kind of tough. So, uh, I'm going to throw that out there, too. Oh, hey. Nice jump attack. Oh, yeah, I knew that was going to hit me. I knew it. For some reason, I thought I remembered these guys doing more damage than me before the patch. Like the day one patch, but I, I don't know. Maybe that's just. Maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe it's just specifically this one who's not. doesn't do like crazy damage, because he's like. so early on. Oh, you know what? What the hell? Let's do one more boss. Let's do one more, because I really want to go to this final spot before I wrap up. Hey, another smithing stone. So that means I can actually level up my weapon by one. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's level up. And actually, why am I rolling, running there when I can fast travel to the Church of Ella? Because I'm not, I'm not too far over one hour. And this is... I'm, I'm typically like to do one hour less plays, but this is like the first episode. Come on. Wait, come on. You're back. Okay, so purchase... Oh, wait. I don't want to purchase anything from you. Sorry, Kali. I want to go to the smithing table. We're going to level up. Now that I have two smithing stones, we're going to make this plus one. You can see it doesn't do like a crazy amount of additional damage. You can level up your weapons by a lot in this game as the game is so big. So don't expect like each one to be a game changing one. It's just, it's nice, you know, it's nice. All right, now we're going to go back here. At least, you know, we got a cleared bridge now that the Knight's Cavalry is dead. The other thing is the Knight's Cavalry I fought only shows up at night. So that's kind of why I was like, you know what, might as well just fight him right now. Because I know he's there. So that was a big reason why I decided to fight him as well as a heads up. Uh, can I equip this now? I can. Ooh, I can be a Godric soldier. Ooh, I, I prefer the Vagabond one though. And hey, now I'm back to being medium loaded with full armor. So that's nice. So I guess I can go back to uploading my strength again for a little bit. Also, I might go with the Guts build here just because I have a lot of fun with it. Um... <laughs> A lot of fun with the Guts build, and I know where the Ultra Great Sword is, which literally looks like Guts' sword, which is just amazing. I love that. I love it so much. So, yeah, I might do it for that reason. But right now, we're going to go to the Waypoint Runes. Uh, there's an important NPC there who I'm not going to chat with this episode. It'll probably be the start of next episode. But just so we can get another fun boss fight in. Um... Yeah, you know, opening day of the game. This is this is awesome. So, uh, I'm having fun knocking out some early game stuff right now. I think next episode we'll probably fight uh, Agheel the Dragon right off the bat after talking to some NPCs. So we'll probably do NPC chatter first, honestly, since I'm going to be right next to one. Or maybe I'll end this episode with that so I don't have to do that at the start of the next episode. So, yeah, we're going to Mad Pumpkinhead. Whoops. Oh, I forgot he had another attack there. Well, that was not a great start. Really not a great start. Maybe I should have just wrapped it up when I was wrapping it up originally. So I could have a full let's play of no deaths. At least I do like decent damage to him, you know? But we'll see. He's not the most difficult guy. I'm just not doing great. And also all my attacks are hitting his helmet, which are exactly what you don't want. Because his helmet like completely negates the damage in full. 
Although, you know, as you're seeing, when I don't hit his helmet, I actually do decent damage to him. But... Yeah, just not ending up in good spots. That's what's nice about the low swing. I'm not going to hit his helmet on the low swing attack, but... Hey! I'm not going to jinx it, but there's something I want to say. But I'll say it afterwards, <laughs> just so I don't jinx it. Oh, man. It's funny to me that he, like, literally uses his helmet as a weapon. I love that about him. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> he is giving me so much more trouble than he should. I... All right, there we go. I was going to say, I'd be so embarrassed if I died against Mad Pumpkinhead. That's what I was going to say. I was like, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it because if it happens. And it might. I don't want to say it. All right, do I have enough to level up? I'm, I'm starting to get to the point where I'm at a high enough level where it's going to start costing stuff. Okay, I can. Does See, it doesn't raise my attack that much yet. But at least it gives me some more defense, which is nice. Uh, and it will be raising my attack, so, you know, that's going to be good for this build. And we find Sorceress Selen here, which is why if you're a sorcery-style build, you want to go here right away, uh, as soon as you can, basically. You want to go here pretty quickly. Tarnished, are we? No wonder you should turn up here. I am Selen, a sorcerer, quite plainly. Why are you here? I want to learn sorcery! Ah. That I'll never use. Again. Glimstone sorceries. I dare say your proclivities are far from ideal. Oh well, perhaps nurture will defy nature. With a bit of luck. But one must choose one's masters wisely. I was exiled from the Academy of Rea Lucaria. As a reviled, apostate witch. Do you still wish to learn from me? Oh, it is Rea Lucaria, huh? Okay. <laughs> well, you are a piece of work. Very well. You are now my protege in Glinstone sorcery. But I refuse to coddle or cast kind words. Never. Anticipate grievances, young apprentice. Okay, so she'll talk to you more once you buy something young from her. Apprentice. First things first. You are a tadpole when it comes to magic. Infantile. Without the legs to walk. So. To become sorcerer, first, you must face your ignorance. Now, shall we start learning? I kind of wish I'd save some stuff for that, but that's okay. Like, Because once you buy one thing, she says a little bit more. Uh, okay, let me get, like, just because I don't want to forget about him, I'm going to get one more NPC out of the way. Um, and then I keep on, like, saying, like, I'm going to wrap up after one thing. I'm going to wrap up over one thing. And then, by the way, this guy's awesome. I love that character. Uh... How do I... Crap. There we go. I always add markers by accident. Wait. No. I, okay. It should be going away. Okay. So, this NPC is a little more difficult to find, um, but i am show you where he's at. This is Bach the Seamster. He is a G. I love Bach. He's a good dude. Although, Blyde, who you just saw in the picture, is one of my favorite characters. Blyde is awesome. Okay. Where is it? You there? Could you help us out, Cully? You hear a mysterious NPC voice. Where could it be coming from? You? Y yeah, you there. Stop pretending you can't see me. Huh? I don't... I can't... What? There's no one here. I don't get it. Oh, why won't anyone look me in the eye? I'm, I'm not that ugly, am I? Let's roll around. Oh! <laughs> What'd you go and do that for? Mm. Oh, yes. I remember. Some clod turned me into a tree. You were just breaking the spell, weren't you? Thank you. The name's Bok. I was pushed out of the cave. Told not to come back. Not ever. Then I ended up as a tree. <laughs> Lucky you came along, really. Yeah, I'd say so. Oh, what a shame. 
When they threw me out of the cave, they took everything I owned. And so this is all I have to express my thanks. I hope you can forgive me. You know what? That's still nice of you. Thank you, Bach. If you can afford to wait for a while, I could sneak back into the cave and bring back something of actual value. Then I'd be of some real use to you, I reckon. Right, but I'll need a moment. I'm, I'm frightened of them, so I have to gather myself. My knees start knocking, just thinking about that god-awful cave on the shore. So the cave he's referring to is on this shore over here. Uh, anyways. Right. Uh, I'm... So that's all he's got for us, uh, and later on we're going to want to meet him at that cave. But that's all for now. So, alright, that for real is going to wrap it up. I believe I've talked to all the NPCs along the way covered a whole lot in this little section and this is just a tiny fragment of the game so uh next episode we might end up doing that cave on the shore but we're definitely going to do go here we're going to cover a lot of uh what's in this location especially the tunnel is going to be important for the beginning and uh yeah we'll keep on and keep on rocking it tons of fun stuff to do so thank you guys so much for joining i appreciate it and i will see you guys next time later guys Peace.